Repentance leads to Christ-like character. The Sin of Irresponsibility with God's Law, Part 2, Distorting God's Grace as a License to Sin. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. The biblical differences between grace and law aren't the opposites, as false teachers say. Our loving and compassionate Father's grace permeates both testaments. The Hebrew scriptures overflow with His grace toward the Israelites. Who led them out of Egypt in power, fed and sustained them in the desert, and gave them the promised land? Who established the Day of Atonement so they could substitute a sacrificed lamb to pay for their sins? Who loved them enough to correct and chastise them when they sinned against Him? People don't like to be corrected. But from our Father's view, correction is discipline. It's a sign of His love for us. Our Father corrects individuals as well as nations in order to deter them from a lawless path. Through correction, he intends that we learn to live righteously. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord, your God, disciplines you. Our Father hasn't changed his ways of showing his love. Mm -hmm. He disciplines followers of his son Jesus so that we may live responsibly to Him and His holy ways. The Lord disciplines those He loves, and He punishes everyone He accepts as a son. Our fathers disciplined us for a little while, as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. The real issue for Christians today isn't whether you keep the laws of God. It's your motive for why you want to obey them. Love is the difference. In both Testaments, our God requires love as the primary motivation for those who belong to Him. It's out of love for Him that you seek to know and apply His laws to your life. Throughout the book of Romans, God makes it clear that it's His Spirit that's the source of love-based obedience to His commands. And of course, no one is justified through their obedience. Justification is found only through the shed blood of our Lord Jesus. It's because of your love for our Lord that you repent and ask forgiveness when you violate one of our Father's laws. This is what any loving person does, or should do, when they hurt or offend someone. Asking forgiveness, whether from our Heavenly Father or from other people, restores the relationship. You don't repent to get anything from our Father or from anyone else. You repent so you can restore the intimate relationship your actions have harmed. Your Heavenly Father won't love you more when you repent. And His love for you isn't lessened when you give way to your sin nature. It's because of His love for you that He's already accepted the sacrifice of Jesus as payment for your sins. But His word clearly reveals that you need to confess and repent when you violate His laws. Repentance restores your fellowship with Him and strengthens your will to live according to His righteous standards in His commands. Think about this. And this is love, that we walk in obedience to His commands. As you have heard from the beginning, His command is that you walk in love. Doesn't a husband or wife want to know what hurts their spouse, so they can avoid that behavior and replace it with goodness? 
don't people who really care for each other try to learn what offends the other person so they can turn that affront to joy? Of course they do. Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fullness of the law. It's not what you do as much as your motive for your actions that matter. And if love towards God and towards others becomes your foremost concern, you'll be far less likely to hurt your relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the head of the body, the called out ones. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Only our Heavenly Father himself is not responsible to anyone. Our Father's actions and His promises to His own are reliable because it's within His own righteous character to be that way. Our Lord Jesus is the head of all His called out ones. In Him, all authority in heaven and on earth has been entrusted. And our Father has created a chain of authority of responsibility for His people. Each person is given unique responsibilities and specific laws in God's Word apply to carrying out these responsibilities. In any venue in which there are laws, whether city, state, or nation, people have a responsibility to know the laws and obey them. And throughout the Bible, our Father holds His children responsible to abide by His laws. The motive behind this responsibility of His people is love. All of God's laws show us how to love God and love each other. The biblical concept of responsibility includes complying with our Lord as his servant child to do something he commands, being accountable to our Lord for the care of another individual, such as a spouse, child, or even an employee. being uniquely entrusted by our Father to fulfill a specific purpose in which you are held accountable when you fail or commended when you succeed. Reporting to our Father through His Spirit and answering for your actions without blaming others or giving excuses. Being morally accountable to our Lord for how you represent Him to others. You can readily recognize these personal responsibilities as you read God's Word. For example, our Father has created specific laws and commands within the Bible that apply to specific individuals within a family. In our next segment, we'll discuss the various family responsibilities of husbands, wives, and children. Scripture presents a particular sequence of authority and responsibility. It flows from God through our Lord Jesus to men and their wives. To our Heavenly Father, a family which is supported by extended family is the basic building block for spiritual development. It's within the context of the family that biblical responsibilities are learned. And it's within the family that God's laws for each family member are learned and put into practice.